Hello, and welcome to Inside Jacksonville, a production of the University of North Florida School of Communication and the CW17. I'm Kayla Chenard. Hello, Ospreys. Welcome to an international news update on Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Kayla Chenard, here to give you the inside scoop on Inside Swoop. Hey there, Ospreys. Welcome to another School of Communication update with ComConnect. I'm Kayla Chenard. And I'm Will Clayton. If you're looking for something to do this week in the School of Communication, we've got you covered. Goats are known as mountain animals, meaning they can climb almost anything, even mountains, and make it look easy. However, that also means they can climb on people's backs while doing yoga. Let's go outside to our reporter, Kayla Chenard, to learn more. Kayla? Thanks, Kylie. You know changes were made for an academic advising in the School of Communication to help students navigate the process more easily. Kim Potter was charged with second-degree manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright in Minnesota. Potter's police chief says it appeared to be a case of confusing her taser with her handgun. Many protesters and Wright's family reject that narrative, saying the incident reflects bias in policing. Potter is a 26-year police veteran and was training another officer at the time of the stop. Forensic pathologist Dr. David Fowler testified for the defense at former officer Derek Chauvin's murder trial that George Floyd died of a sudden heart rhythm disturbance as a result of his heart disease. This blatantly contradicts prosecution experts who say Floyd died of a lack of oxygen. Dr. Fowler is a former Maryland chief medical examiner who is now working with a consulting firm. Body camera footage of a Chicago police officer fatally shooting 13-year-old Adam Toledo last month will be released today. This will include body cam footage, video captured by a third party, arrest reports, and recordings of shots being fired in the area that led police to respond. The review board initially said it couldn't release the video due to it involving a minor, but it changed course after the mayor and police superintendent called for the video's release. Where reporter Kayla Chenard is here to share more on the steps to complete the process. Kayla? Thanks, Will. Ospreys, if you plan on completing your internship this summer, there are plenty of pre-approved sites that offer face-to-face, -face, remote, or a combination of both. To find these pre-approved internships, visit the Communication Information website. Remember, you can't register for your senior internship class until your internship has been approved. The deadline for applications is April 15th. Back to you, Will. A new decor is taking over residents' front doors on the First Coast. I met with Lee Hamby to talk about his new small business that's creating big smiles. Here are wreaths by Lee. I really was like freaking out about how am I going to make money? How am I going to pay bills? These are some of the questions many people ask themselves after the pandemic hit. Lee Hamby was one of the thousands of people who didn't know where he was going to go next. The pandemic uh, really took a toll on what I do for a living, which is theater. And a lot of people don't know, but I house and pets it as well. Lee would have never guessed that designing and crafting wreaths would be his saving grace. Lee is known to the Jacksonville community as one of the founders of the Five and Dime Theater Company. But now he has a new name, of course, Wreaths by Lee. After discovering the wreath craze on social media, Lee knew he couldn't miss out on his opportunity to make beautiful floral arrangements. And it, within an hour of putting that Facebook page up, I had 12 orders and I thought, you know, I thought I was going to make like four or five reads and, you know, pay a bill or two and call it a day. I had no idea that people were so in need of wreaths. I was blown away. Lee explains how a wreath is really just a floral arrangement, meaning there's one for every occasion. Wreaths by Lee took something that was considered only for the holidays and created something so beautiful your front door can't go without one all year long. With wreaths selling like crazy, Lee knew he'd need a partner to help carry some of the load. Josh Andrews joined Lee in his wreath making journey to help deliver product in Jacksonville. Just to see people's smile on their face when they get their personalized wreath is like, it's great. It's just validation, not for me, but for him that like what he's doing is really special. Since starting in October, Lee has made over 400 wreaths and expanded his business nationally through Etsy.com. The wreaths are made from faux materials, meaning they can hang timelessly on your door. People can't get enough of wreaths by Lee. We were outside with the kids and um, Josh pulled up and I was like, oh, it's my wreath. And so I saw it, I was like, oh, it's perfect. So it just really, it really works. 
Small businesses have been hit hard due to the pandemic, but Lee proves that it takes guts and hard work to reach your goals. People should shop small business because, you know, small businesses are usually somebody's dream and supporting that dream is always important. Every week, Lee posts never before seen wreath designs on his Facebook and Etsy page. Both sites can be found by searching wreaths by Lee. Coming up, how a teacher took the opportunity to give back to her students and community after noticing donations going to waste at her school. Also after the break, exotic animals are making some big roars on the first coast that you'll be able to hear from miles away. Stay with us. This week, we are focusing on registration tips for digital video production students. Before selecting classes, remember that digital video editing is now a required course in the production concentration if you started in fall 2019. If you are still looking for that perfect major elective course, consider principles of broadcasting or documentary fundamentals for the summer term. Major elective courses offered in the fall are narrative production, history of mass communication, or TV production and visual arts. Keep these classes in mind while you prepare to register, Ospreys. Hey there, Ospreys. Welcome to a sports news update on Inside Swoop in 90, Sox edition. I'm Kayla Chenard, here to give you an update on all things Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox were on a nine-game winning streak when they went up against the Minnesota Twins in their final series game. However, the Sox lost their final game in the series, with the Twins scoring their fourth run to win in the bottom of the ninth. This ignited a rough series for the Red Sox against the Chicago White Sox this past weekend. The Red Sox had a promising start winning the first game in the series 7-4. However, the White Sox took both wins in their doubleheader yesterday. The final game in this series will be the first time since 1959 the annual Patriots Day game will not be held in conjunction with the Boston Marathon, as the run was postponed October 11th. The Red Sox wore their yellow and blue City Series uniforms their first game against the White Sox to honor the marathon, which represents the colors that stretch across the finish line. The Red Sox have a nice, comfortable stay at their home stadium, playing the rest of the week at Fenway. This includes two games against the Toronto Blue Jays and a three-game series against the Seattle Mariners. Well, that's another edition of Inside Swoop in 90. I'm Kayla Chenard. Thanks for watching and hope the Red Sox don't strike out this week. From all of us here at Inside Jacksonville, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next month right here on the CW17.